Man, when it rains, it pours. I have found a ton of really cool stuff at garage sales in the last couple of weeks. Let's take a look at some of the new equipment, including this 16-bit Heathkit H11 microcomputer made in the late 70s and early 80s. Recently, the yard and estate sale scene in town has had a lot of really cool old tech. As I mentioned in the shop tour video, I recently picked up a Heathkit H89 at a yard sale. This seems to have triggered an avalanche of really cool stuff much of which is due to the generosity of a kind family that wanted to see their dad's collection kept alive. The week after I picked up the H89, I went to an estate sale at a ranch a ways out of town. They had a ton of amazing stuff, but my pocketbook was stinging from a new crown that I'd picked up the day before. No, not that kind of crown. I told them that I'd pay $100, which was my entire budget for the weekend, for this 1967 Monroe Epic 9000 calculator if it did not sell by the end of the weekend. Well, it turns out they were more interested in seeing their dad's stuff restored and go where it'd be loved than money. So, much to my surprise, they accepted the offer on the spot. I'll save the history lesson for a dedicated video, but suffice it to say, this thing is truly epic. Later that day, I had a run on handhelds where I picked up four handhelds at three different garage sales within about a half an hour or an hour of each other. All told, I picked up a Nintendo DS with a floppy screen hinge, a Game Boy Advance, a Game Boy Advance SP, and a Game Boy Color, along with about 20 games total between the systems. The following day, the family that I purchased the Epic 3000 calculator from called me and asked if I could help them by hauling away some of the electronics that didn't sell. We were at my niece's college graduation, so we stopped by on the way home. Congratulations, Melissa. We are proud of you as always. Let's take a quick look at the things I picked up, and then we'll take a closer look at the Heathkit H11. What I thought at first glance to be a regular VHS VCR is an Alpha Micro Video Tracks computer controlled data storage unit. I didn't find a ton of information about this online, other than a post from somebody who's been looking for one for over a decade. So after I do a short teardown video, I'll be passing it along to him in keeping with the family's wishes that these items go to people who will enjoy them. There's also this Desitec rack mount paper tape unit. There's a pair of Texas Instruments Silent 700 data terminals, one of which has an acoustic modem built in. I found some information on them and they were marketed as operating at a blistering 30 characters per second. I also find the look of this ICM-816 calculator interesting. I like the large display and for 1970 it's starting to look more like a modern calculator. Then there were two Apple monitors, an A2M6016 12 inch monochrome unit and an A2M2056 14 inch color monitor, both for the Apple II. There was also a Sanyo DMC 6013 13-inch color monitor, which looks to me like it's also for the Apple II. I remember the Apple IIe's in high school so fondly. It's the first computer I learned to program, and I was secretary of the high school computer club back in 1980. I would absolutely love to get an Apple IIe one of these days, but right now it's just not in the cards. But someday. I also picked up this 1995 Compact Presario CDS524 computer system. It's an interesting all-in-one form factor, but 1995 seems a little late for a 486 system. This is what this should have in it. Uh, it's going to have to wait until I have time to do a restoration video, but suffice it to say, and the battery is not going to cause any problems. It hasn't leaked yet, and it ain't gonna. Finally, the items that I was really surprised to still see there was this Heathkit H11 16-bit microcomputer from around 1980, along with the optional paper tape memory and dual 8-inch floppy drive. Unfortunately, the terminal was missing. Fortunately, the H89 from the weekend before can do the job. Talk about the universe looking after me. It's based on the digital LSI 11 processor series, and it operates at 2.5 megahertz. So 16 bits and 2.5 megahertz coming out in 78, I was surprised. Let's just put it that way. 
I'm really looking forward to restoring these in future videos, but right now I want to take a look inside the H11. I want to take a look at the H11 itself. So I'm going to pull the rest of the parts out of here. This is the heaviest floppy drive I have ever seen in my life. It's a beast. Literally weighs 60 some pounds. All right, so let's pull this beast apart and see what's inside. Let's see, how do we get into this thing? Looks like the top cover's attached by three screws. You know it's vintage when they're freaking flat tip screws. Cord's permanently attached. It's really corroded. Gross. All right, let's see what's in here. Okay, so like the power supply is over here. About the biggest cap I've ever seen in there. I'll show that to you in a minute. And then I saw some stuff online, uh, found the manuals to this, and this cage comes off. Okay. Ah, yep. Just a couple of nuts here. Hey, look, I got the right size nut driver. Kind of funky, but you got to remember this was a kit. Although my understanding is if you bought it in kit form, you assembled the power supply, but the boards came pre-assembled. Looks like these cables are attached in there. Yep, that's loose. There's a couple hooks in the back here, so just snap that back, I think. Yep, there we go. So it looks like these big Molex looking uh, connectors are serial connectors of some kind. Uh, Backplane has a main board here. There's four circuit boards. Two of them are serial I.O. One of them's H11.5. The other is WHA-11-5. Ah, floppy I.O. So the long cable that's on the floppy drive, let's go into that connector there. And this, this one's not labeled, but I think it's pretty clear what it is. RAM board, RAM board, MOSTEC. All right, I don't want to disconnect these serial ports until I know more about where they go and how they go. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull the cards and leave them connected to their cables. Quite the primitive little backplane they have got going on here. All right, so this card, one serial card. Let's set that back over here. Wow, now this serial card is 100% socketed, which is kind of interesting. Got a bodge, couple of bodge resistors and a bodge wire on the back, but it looks like that's probably original. And from the looks of this and the flux, this is one of those cards that you assembled yourself as a kit. Here's the floppy I.O. card. Also 100% socketed. This one's not cabled up, so I can give you a closer look at it. Finally, the first look at the main board. Oh, wow, that's gorgeous. Let me... Uh, Find a way I can set this so that I can give you guys a better view. There we go. This is freaking gorgeous. Not quite as much gold as my grandpa's uh, HP 45 calculator, but got some of those classic old white C's. So one thing I don't see in here is any electrolytic caps, maybe one. Looks like there might be some film, boot-looted diodes. I don't know, there's some electrolytics down on the bottom by the bus. Just a couple. Up in here, it's the biggest freaking capacitor I've ever seen in my life by a large margin. I'm just going to grab the phone and tuck it up in here so you guys can get a look at this. How's that? Right there for a big-ass capacitor. 
I don't see any signs of leakage. Everything in there is looking pretty good. It's one of the cereal boards. Definitely looks like some homemade soldering on it, but not terrible soldering at all by any means. This is the one that is labeled WHA 11-5. Some of these solder joints look a little light on the solder, so I may have to go through and uh, clean this up a bit. We'll see how it works when that time comes. So one of the things you can tell on this one that it's a later one is this switch was added and it was added in after 1980. Otherwise, people were having to run a manual, uh, a manual switch. I believe it comes off the power supply um, on a uh, warm restart with this. Without this switch, it would hang. So you should take a look at this shop tour video if you haven't seen it already. And here's another video you might like. Did I say to like and subscribe? I hope not, because I really hate doing that crap.